The mid-season patch revives some much-loved game mechanics and items. ADCs are celebrating now that they get 25% crit for each item, and every other class is molding because the roll is no longer as strong as a wet paper towel. Mages get another burn item, as if we didn't have enough flame on the rift, and Overlord's Bloodmail makes a triumphant return, heralding the arrival of another AD Bruiser meta, because I really wanted to see more of Scion, Mundo, and Set. Speaking of Set, I'm taking this opportunity to revive a fun and theoretically sound build, mathematically correct Set. The items that are in the game right now are the perfect mix to recreate the horror that is this build, except now with even more damage and absurdity. First, let's talk about Set. Set is a member of the Juggernaut class, characterized by his threatening presence and 1v9 ability. His passive, Pit Grit, has two parts. The first part gives him more health regeneration based on his missing health, and the second is his signature 1-2 punch. The second punch does increase damage, and is 8 times faster than the first. His Q, Knuckle Down, empowers his next two attacks to deal bonus max health damage, and gives him increased movement speed towards enemy champions. His W, Haymaker, stores recently taken damage on his secondary resource bar as Grit. Upon activation, it gives Set a shield equal to his grit, and deals damage in a cone in front of him, scaling with the grit expended. The center of this cone deals true damage, and the outer edge deals physical damage. His E, Facebreaker, pulls in enemies on both sides of him, slowing enemies hit and stunning them if he grabs at least one unit on each side. His ult, the Showstopper, grabs an enemy and slams them into the ground, dealing damage based on their maximum health to all enemies in the impact zone. Haymaker has one of the most convoluted scalings in the game. Most abilities that have a form of scaling have a base value and a scaling value. For example, Set's Facebreaker deals 130 plus 60% AD physical damage, where the base value is 130 and the scaling is 60% AD. Haymaker's shield scales with 100% of the expended grit, up to 50% of your max health, but the damage is a bit more complicated. It deals 160 base, plus 25% expended grit, plus 25% per 100 bonus AD. Functionally, the damage is calculated with this formula which is nothing like the scaling of most other abilities. As such, it is hard to do direct comparisons between the value of bonus AD and health. For other abilities with multiple scalings, such as Kale's Radiant Blast, you can directly compare stats to see which one will result in more damage, and concentrate on building that. For Haymaker, the amount of grit dealt as damage is reliant on Set's bonus AD. Because one scaling value relies on another, direct comparison is not possible, at least in a vacuum. We can make some inferences from this formula to help us, as well as brute force find the optimal build. Haymaker scales off two stats, which allows us to plot them on a Cartesian plane, then plot a max damage Haymaker with those stats on the z-axis. This gives us a 3D space that displays our builds for easy comparison. Haymaker's maximum damage scales based on this formula, which simplifies to this. The blue surface is every possible damage value for every combination of bonus AD and health. As you can see here, I have plotted several builds that Set can buy, including the meta build and my own special blend. A typical Set player will build Stridebreaker first, then buy Hullbreaker, Overlord's Bloodmail, Steric's Gage, and Black Cleaver, in no particular order. This build is shown here in orange. To find the optimal build, we will show how swapping out items can improve the build, and do this until we find the best one. Thanks to Heartsteel's infinite health stacking, by the time we've reached full build we will have a lot of bonus health accumulated. This cannot be concretely determined, but from the few games I have played, I have found an average stacking rate that a normal player can achieve. Since I am by no means a set main, this will be easy for most players. First item completion happens at around 10 to 15 minutes, and from there stacks are gained at a rate of around 40 per minute, increasing as the game progresses. By the time you finish your build, at around 40 minutes, you will have around 800 bonus health from Heartsteel. To accelerate your scaling, in fights you should be looking for as many stacking opportunities as you can. The more health you have, the more health you gain from heart skill procs. Our optimal build will be determined by several conditions. First, it must yield the highest possible damage from a maxed out haymaker. This condition speaks for itself. Second, it must contain no armor or magic resist. Grit is built up from post-mitigation damage, so resistances will only slow down grit stacking. Third, if two builds yield similar damage, prioritize the one that has more AD. This condition uses the fact that a build with Heartsteel will gain health over the course of the game. Heartsteel will definitely be built because this is a late game build, so we want all the stacking and scaling we can get. From the meta set build, we first want to add in Heartsteel. So will remove Stridebreaker to build it first. Thanks to the stacks it will generate over the course of the game, we will have even more health by the time this build is complete. Next we can remove Black Cleaver in favor of a better stat stick. Since we no longer have Stridebreaker, we can build Titanic Hydra. It gives large amounts of both the stats we need, and an auto reset to improve your punching. We don't need the armor shred from Cleaver, since we will be dealing mostly true damage. Finally, we swap out Hullbreaker for Spear of Shojin. While its stats might not look too impressive, what we really want is the passive. Focus Will grants stacking ability damage, up to 12% for melee champions, which applies to true damage. 
damage. This 12% damage boost to Haymaker is worth more than any stats the other items can bring. It also messes with the damage formula, meaning we need a new curve to show the 12% increase, shown here in green. The other items in this build, Steric's Gage and Overlord's Bloodmail, give insane amounts of both AD and health. Bloodmail has two passives that make it core to this build, Tyranny and Retribution. Tyranny gives 2% of bonus health as bonus AD, much like the old Titanic Hydra, and Retribution gives up to 10% increased AD based on missing health, giving the maximum at 70% missing health, much like Gore Drinker's original passive. Bloodmail combines the best aspects of Gore Drinker and the old Titanic Hydra, core items in the original mathematically correct set. The lifeline shield Sterix gives allows you room to breathe once you reach max grit, so you don't die before you can use Haymaker. When at or below 30% of your max health, a max grit Haymaker will deal around 3000 true damage, while also giving you a 2700 health shield. By the time you reach full build you'll have about 7000 health. That, along with Shojin's damage increase, will make Haymaker deal 4500 damage and shield for 3500 health. As you can see, the extra health from Heart Seal approaches the value of another full item, which is kind of ridiculous if you think about it. This health is also being converted into AD, thanks to Overlord's Blood Mail, making Heart Steel even more gold efficient. After buying Heart Steel, make sure to take either Lucidity or Swiftness Boots. The extra cooldown reduction from Lucidity will allow you to throw out more Haymakers, and the slow resistance and movement speed from Swifties will let you catch those pesky backliners. You can sell these late game for another item, like Hullbreaker or Black Cleaver, though I find it's a lot harder to play set without boots. If there's an Orn on your team, place Titanic Hydra into your first slot so it will become your masterwork item. It only gives AD and health, so the stat increase affects those stats only. Now that we have our build, we need a rune page to go with it. Grasp of the Undying is an obvious choice for a keystone, thanks to the infinite health stacking. It also improves your early game trading, allowing you to still have impact during laning phase. It is also viable to take Conqueror instead, since that gives a large amount of adaptive force in combat. But I prefer the infinite scaling that Grasp gives. Next we can take either Demolish or Shield Bash. Demolish will help you with split pushing, and with all the health you'll be building it's going to do a lot of damage late game. However, Shield Bash will improve your burst combo, dealing damage on your next auto, scaling with your shield size and bonus health. After using Haymaker, your next attack will hurt a surprising amount. I recommend Shield Bash, since you want to be team fighting instead of split pushing, but if you need to side lane, take Demolish. Second Wind is the only rune in this row that doesn't reduce incoming damage, so we'll be taking it to build grid as fast as possible. Last in the Resolve Tree is Overgrowth, another source of stacking health. Taking this one is a bit of a no-brainer. For our secondary runes, there are two options, Precision and Sorcery. Precision has Last Stand, which gives you increased damage when low health. This is good for this build, since you'll ideally be low health for the majority of team fights. The damage increase doesn't apply to true damage though, Sorcery has the rune Gathering Storm, giving stacking adaptive force as the game progresses. This is perfect for late game builds like this one, giving set lots of bonus AD for an even bigger haymaker. If you can guarantee that you'll make it to late game, take Sorcery second, with Gathering Storm and either Nimbus Cloak or Transcendence. If you need early game strength, go Precision, taking Last Stand and either Legend Haste, Legend Alacrity, or Triumph. For shards, take double adaptive and scaling health. Because of the infinitely stacking health we gain, it is preferable to take more AD from shards rather than double scaling health. Mathematically correct set is back in a big way. The items in this build are perfect for him, especially Overlord's Blood Mail. This build relies heavily on reaching the late game, but once you're there, your very presence will scatter your enemies. This video is inspired by the mathematically correct set build, first showcased by Ross Boomsocks. So go subscribe to his channel. I have sent the relevant information from this video to him, in the hope that he will make a new video about this build. Regardless of whether he does or not, you should play this strategy. I guarantee that you might do well. And even if you don't, it's very funny to one-shot ADCs. You'd think this would get old, but no, it's just as funny every time. Thanks for making it to the end. I actually made this video within a reasonable time frame for once, which is a pleasant surprise. This video was a lot more technical than anything I've done in the past. Lots of graphs and 3D plots and horrible maths. I should really go outside and touch some graphs. I'm hoping to do more player showcases in the future, similar to my video on the Baus FFS. If you have any video ideas for me, especially ideas for players I should make a video about, leave them in the comments. Thanks again for watching.